Thanks, Caroline. And welcome, everybody. It's really good to see uh, so many people, some familiar faces, some new faces. I hope I get a chance, we get a chance to talk to all of you during uh, the day. And uh, I, like you, I'm sure I'm looking forward to the, uh, the, the wine later on. <laughs> oh, <laughs> typical, yes. So the shortest keynote in the world from me, and then an equally short one from Bill Harvey, who we're very pleased to have here from uh, the QAA in Scotland, um, illuminating the concept of student engagement. And what I wanted to do, basically, was to set out a framework on which the structure of the day is based, to some extent, uh, of uh, what we mean, or what we think we mean, or what we can mean by student engagement. This comes from uh, two projects. One was funded by the Higher Education <coughs> Academy, uh, 2010, and, and then a subsequent one funded by the Leadership Foundation for Higher Education, 2010-2011. I worked with uh, Vicky Trowler. You can always tell the Trowlers in this room because they've got white jackets on, so it's very simple. Uh, and actually, Vicky did all the work, so I'm a complete fraud this morning, and I'm a complete fraud in the workshop because I'm working with Phil, who uh, did his doctorate on student engagement, so they both know much more about it than I do. Um, but I think it's really important to define uh, concepts. And as Caroline said, the approach to student engagement and student partnership is, is quite different uh, from uh, that taken by, um, by, by Robbins. Uh, all of this stuff is available in the several outputs from the two, two projects. And there's a YouTube video of me giving a much longer keynote. There uh, we go. Uh, about this if you want uh, more than 15 minutes you probably won't <laughs> so uh, basically we've got three foci of uh, student engagement three areas in the literature Vicky wrote a 20,000 word literature review of everything that we could be found calling itself uh, student about being about student engagement so the three foci then the big one in the literature is individual student learning what goes on in the classroom, uh, student-centered learning, if you like, even to the extent of negotiating uh, the syllabus and, and the methods of teaching, etc. Second one we call structure and process, part of which is, is representation, uh, involvement in the actual management in some way, or at least giving student voice in terms of feedback, etc. Uh, but we wanted to broaden it in, in, in the work for the HEA and the Leadership Foundation to engagement in some sense in instruction process. And then the third area of the literature that student, the concept of student engagement uh, embraces is the question of identity, identity change, a sense of community, a, a change in the, in the identity in terms of who you think you are and a feeling of involvement or not uh, with the institution or perhaps the college uh, that you're in. I think here at Lancaster, being a collegiate as well as a collegial university, we're quite lucky. Students here uh, identify very quickly with the college. You know, I've heard drunk students singing Boland or Dead two, two years, uh, uh, sorry, two weeks uh, after starting here. So uh, Boland is one of the colleges. Great, you know, uh, quickly getting that identification. And then you can divide those uh, three areas. You can see the three areas in the red there, learning, identity, structure, and process, along various axes <coughs> from really no involvement, no engagement, to full participation um, in terms of identity, being completely alienated, not feeling involved at all, and not having any identity change, right through to total inclusivity and, and, and uh, really significant identity change. And then in terms of learning, uh, no interest, no involvement to fully student-centered in the sense really of students being involved in planning the curriculum, in assessment, and, and so on. So, uh, and that's really what we're talking about when we compare back to Robbins 50, 51 years ago. Uh, quite low down early on in the spectrum uh, on each of those. Um, it's worth mentioning Paul Ashwin's uh, head of department, his work uh, with, uh, with colleagues, ESRC funded research into quality and inequality in, uh, in, in sociology, pedagogic uh, equality. 
Um, what they found was that engagement with knowledge uh, had important uh, implications, important effects on identity, on feelings of involvement, and so on. And really the point I'm making here is that that research into sociology in three, three different institutions, sociology students in three quite contrasting institutions, showed that we shouldn't really divide the concept of student engagement up into those three parts. It's, it's conceptually useful, it's academically useful, it has heuristic power, but if we do so, we miss, we can miss the fact that they affect each other. So that research, I think, was really quite useful in demonstrating, uh, demonstrating that the engagement with academic knowledge, which is, of course, part of the teaching and learning axis. Then, just to further complexify slightly, uh, the situation, we can talk about, um, along each of those three axes, behavioral, emotional, and cognitive uh, engagement, what you do, how you feel, and how you think, and what you're, what you're thinking about. And then uh, you can have congruent or oppositional engagement. So congruent engagement is really doing what you're expected to do what you're being asked to do in terms of studying these texts, doing these exams well, and so on. But you also get a, the other form of engagement, oppositional engagement, sometimes called negative engagement in the literature, but I don't, don't think that's quite right, where there's rebellion and innovation, change, and so on. And I often like to think of the example of the NUS protesting against the introduction of fees, captured by the media at the time because somebody perhaps threw or maybe it dropped a fire extinguisher from a roof and then that became the story. But that was engagement. Those students were engaged, uh, but it was oppositional in a sense to, uh, in that case, the policy of uh, the introduction of uh, fees at the time. And I think most people would agree that higher education in a sense is about that. We don't want them to be sheep who just do what we tell them to do. We want them to become free thinkers, critical thinkers, thinking for themselves. And so oppositional isn't negative, uh, as it's sometimes described in the literature. It's, it's oppositional. It's thinking differently. And that's what we want. So you can see uh, in the boxes there, <coughs> in the matrix, uh, the different things that you, you might see. What we don't want, of course, is non-engagement, the thing in the middle. <coughs> So uh, Vicky and I tried to come up with a definition of engagement. Always a good idea to try to define your terms. But this is a working definition. And I, I don't think either of us like it very much, uh, <laughs> really. But it's about as close as, as we can come. So the investment of time, effort, and other relevant resources by both students and their institutions intended to optimize uh, the student experience and enhance the learning outcomes and development of students and the performance and reputation of the institution. I'll come back to that little difference uh, in a minute between the, uh, the out learning outcomes and development of students and the performance uh, and reputation of the institution. Um, the trouble is that could apply to, to most things, I think. It could, it could be to do with getting more computers and stuff. Uh, so it's, it's not quite uh, specific enough. And the other trouble with it is, actually, Michael Apple said, concept, concepts have wings, they fly. And they do, they're, they're, concepts are not stable and student engagement is a, it has very big wings and it flies a, a long way. It's used for different purposes. Uh, so it's a really tough ask to try to define it. Uh, the QAA helpfully have had a go. So they've got this little two minute video How to go at defining it. The video is called, What is Student Engagement? So let's have a look at them. Phil and I will be thinking a bit more about this in our workshop. What is student engagement? Student engagement is about you getting involved, raising your views, feeling empowered and shaping your education. QAA work with student representatives and the National Union of Students to help us see your perspective. Since quality matters, 
We hold events to bring together students and university staff. That way, you get to influence decision makers and share your good practice. QAA also have a student advisory board which allows students to give us their views and act as our critical friend. We even have students on our board of directors. When we carry out reviews at your university or college, we use student reviewers on our teams to ensure students are at the centre of the process. You can even get involved in a review by becoming or supporting the lead student representative. They provide QAA with useful information on what students think about their educational experience. They look at student opinion, results from surveys and other feedback. Getting involved means you can have confidence in your education, making sure you have the best possible student experience while studying. Find out more at qaa.ac.uk slash partners slash students or follow us on Twitter at QAA Tweets. <laughs> <laughs> I should have brought my guitar, shouldn't I? I played along. Okay, there we go. Oh, it's going to go on forever. Right, little background. Um, so you can see, let me go into that one, isn't it? Yeah. Um, that, understandably, it's their job, the QAA are concentrating on the structure and what we call the structure and process uh, axis of, or focus of, of uh, student engagement. And you might like to think where that is on the, on the spectrum, you know, the little boxes, the cube with the little boxes in. Contrast that, as Phil and I will be, with the NUS manifesto, uh, student partnership manifesto. Quite an interesting uh, contrast uh, to, be, to be made there. And I'll come on to implementation issues in a second. So going back to that definition and right at the end, you know, for the development of the student and the, and the reputation, et cetera, of the institution. Question is engagement for what? And uh, you can see and the, the gap is significant uh, there. And that's the gap between uh, really uh, issues around the student and the effects on the student and so on and in the interests of the, uh, of the institution. Um, and that's what I mean about concepts have wings and how people use it and so on. The purposes that it's being deployed for uh, are really uh, um, important in uh, affecting what people actually mean uh, by it. So I think you can also see the influence of educational ideology behind this. And I think there's a, something of a battle going on at the moment. Um, between uh, you know, people who are, think that student engagement is really significant and want to see, for example, the National Student Survey being replaced by the National, uh, national uh, Student Engagement uh, Survey, such as the ones that they have in America and Australia and ones coming in other countries as well. And of course, Alex Buckley, who's with us at the moment from the HEA, is responsible for uh, piloting a student engagement survey. So we've got the market model of student engagement founded in what I would call an enterprise ideology which sees higher education in, in particular ways and its job as being to do with the economy. Okay. And then a developmental model which is rooted in what I would call progressivism uh, which I think you can see in Robbins, you can certainly see it in Deering and so on. So the, the battle between students as consumers and students as fully engaged uh, partners in, uh, in what they do. So here's an example of uh, marketing, using engagement in marketing, students using clickers to uh, uh, cast a view or make a choice on what the lecturer is saying. And I'm having to go very quickly here. And thinking about these different alternatives, where one stands in the ac on, on the axes, the spectrums for each of those three foci. Uh, it's really important, I think, to think about where are we now? Where, you know, my institution, if I'm trying to enhance engagement, what is salient for us? Which of those three dimensions? What is congruent with what we do already to have a revolution, at least in the higher education context, is, uh, doesn't happen much. And what's profitable? How can we, in a sense, sell it to those involved? And the final uh, slide has some of the resources 
uh, that uh, are available that I've mentioned. And it's time for me to stop. Thank you very much.